So here we have uh, Freescale Vibrant uh, on the Tora deck. So what is, what is this? So the Freescale Vibrant uh, SOC is actually a new controller Freescale announced and it's a very exciting low power controller. It's a Cortex-A5 ARM CPU paired together with an option of having a second M4 core and they're actually sharing the same peripherals and you can use that if you have certain application where you need hard real-time capability where you previously used an old-fashioned microcontroller on your carrier board you can now use one module with one CPU you run your whole real-time uh, code in the M4 cord for instance, like medical application or controller application, or you need real hard, uh, real hard real time capabilities. And on the other side, you still have a Cortex A5 here on uh, a Linux and Android or a Windows Embedded Compact operating system that takes care of the graphics interface and also the connectivity. So uh, it's right here, right? Exactly. Is it connected right now? You can see it here connected in our Colibri Evaluation Board. It's the hardware development platform, and it's actually running uh, Linux up here in XGA resolution and you can see this is our Linux environment it's an open embedded Linux environment and this is ready to go so we're launching this module here today at the ARM TechCon 2013 and we also announced the pricing the pricing is actually very exciting the module starts at 26 US dollars in high volumes and it's as low as 46 US dollars for just single piece quantity so that's very exciting um, today to announce uh, is it fast? Yeah, the Cortex A5 runs at 500 megahertz, and um, so that's enough for a display up to XGA resolution, um, which you can see here. So we can. This is just a standard image display. Um, there is no optimization like graphics acceleration. Doesn't have a 2D graphics accelerator or anything like that. It's really just a display. If you need a screen um, and a low power system, this is the way to go. So what's the what's the use case? Uh, there's a military uh, exactly. Display. So the, the real target of the chip is actually um, automotive application, industrial uh, automation, everything where you need um, just a little screen um, and maybe some hard real time requirements like a medical device, maybe a printing machine, motor controlling, something haptic where you have force feedback. Um, that's typically the application for that chip. Let's check some of the other uh, uh, modules that you have. Sure. So the so Freescale fact, right there. It's actually the, the Freescale Vibri Colibri module is an addition to our existing Colibri family. Um, we're well known for the old PXA modules which we, um, which we had and they're all pin compatible. So you can change the module in your design which will be where you're changing the application, the power level, the speed, and the memory and flash configuration. We also have the NVIDIA Tegra 2 and the NVIDIA Tegra 4, which are more high-performance chip on the same form factor. So it was like uh, three years ago, two years ago? Exactly. 2011, we announced the Tegra, 4, uh, Tegra 2, sorry, and in 2012, we announced uh, the Tegra 3. And they're all pin compatible, so someone designing with the Colibri family can switch back and forth in the module anytime. So uh, right here, those are the videos and... Uh, These are the old uh, Marvel X scale, exactly. And, and uh, what is, what's going on over here? So what we also have is we have an ecosystem of development boards. So that one in particular is actually a form factor, a small form factor development board it's a Pico ITX form factor and what you would do is you would chain take the module clip it in and and that's a full computer system you have a single board computer system right now with DVI output USB Ethernet support and some custom IOs where you connect whatever you want to add to it and you can uh, fit it in here exactly what you see here is just uh, an example of a casing um, it's just sometimes to show our customers how they can integrate it and how compact it actually looks. And this can feature up to a quad-core Cortex-A9 in such a small form factor. Uh, which, which one is that? That would be the NVIDIA Tegra 2, uh, Tegra 2 and Tegra 3. Tegra 3 yeah. Or you just go down to a, a, a Freescale Vibrate, which is 500 megahertz, and that uses below 1 watts in power consumption. Uh, so, what is here? Again, from the Colibri uh, form family, what we have here is a multi-touch demo. So a lot of times our customer reach out to us and they need to build 
a nice looking graphics interface. This is actually Qt running on our Colibri um, Windows CE system. And what you can see here is uh, it's just a nice top up application where you can, for instance, that's a demo for a, a home control. We can you can go into the kitchen and control the temperature you have in the kitchen. It's just a way of showing our customers how easy they can build good-looking graphics interfaces. So which, uh, which other platforms are you going to support in the future? So we're, we're working right now on extending the Colibri form factor, which is more a mobile type form factor, but we also have new the uh, Apollis form factor, which is more targeted at high performance. You have PCI Express, SATA, and also um, gigabit Ethernet interfaces. So it's really two complementary product lines we have. And uh, so which one is most popular? Still the Colibri form factor is really popular because it's such, such a small form factor. Customers can integrate it in a, in a small device like a phone or a tablet PC. Um, however, we do have a lot of people migrating over from the x86 world and uh, a Polis form factor is very popular there because you have those high-speed interfaces available and that's what they're used to work with. So it's, uh, what is the Apalis? Is it x86? No, it's not x86. It's an ARM uh, computer module, but it does have those well-known interfaces which were previously exclusive for x86. Like uh, PCI Express, USB 3.0, Gigabit Ethernet, Serial Auto. All these interfaces, they are new in the ARM world. So, Relatively new, in so fact. You can support 3D graphics. You can do 3D Hard. graphics, multiple screens, you can have PCI Express, you can, you can have a CUDA card to computing, GPU computing, it's a really wide application area. And all based on ARM, it's all ARM powered. How about the newer, more powerful ones? Are you considering some different other? Okay. Of course, I mean, once newer platforms like Cortex-A15s will be enabled in the embedded market, uh, we'll be eager providing module solution on that, but for now, uh, Quad-Core Cortex-A9 is really uh, the latest available in the embedded market. We also have to consider normally embedded is a little bit slower. We're like a year behind what you would see in the mobile world on your tablet PCs or on your phones because here we're talking about long-term availability, extended temperature range, and that takes verification in the development side. That's why it's usually a little bit delayed. Yeah. And so people who buy your solution to test and try and do and then make, well, how does it work? Exactly. So. People start evaluating with a module and an evaluation board. They, they start customizing it, add their circuitry to it. And once they go into production, all they do is they buy the module, but they will have their own custom base board. We're actually providing the design data of this board. So you can download the full schematics and design data in Altium of that board. And sometimes then you might want to add some connectors or maybe reposition connectors. That's all you want to do. And you're ready to go. You can go in production add the computer module to it, and you have your custom embedded system. So you provide open source PCB design? Exactly. For all our carrier boards are open source, and we're not only providing the schematics, you can really download the full design data, including the, uh, the library files. So all you have to do is download that, get yourself an EVA license from Altium, and it can start customizing and build your system. So where are your customers? Our customers are really widespread. I mean. Here in the US, the, probably the most popular one is medical devices. So anything in medical that has a screen, that has connectivity, um, this is a pretty hot market. But it goes into uh, avionics, automotive, test and measurement, defense as well, uh, environmental monitoring, pretty much everything that has some kind of computer. Mostly in which countries do you have customers? Uh, Toradex, we're, we're present worldwide. So we sell into uh, all the countries worldwide. Uh, Germany, especially Europe, is a very hot market for embedded systems. But here in the US, it's also we're seeing a strong trend uh, where everything gets more integrated, everything gets more connected. Uh, basically, people talking about the Internet of Things. And that's where all these systems come together. How about Asia? Asia is big too, of course. The, the difference there is a little bit, you have a lot of local companies that are competing. We do have an office in China, uh, in India and in Vietnam to support that market.